you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The leading listening show where we discuss real important issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly. Real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. It's disturbing to many supporters and fans of R. Kelly, and also to many people who have been independently following the case against the R&B King, to learn that the government can charge a citizen basing on no real facts but hearsay. The acts of Kim Fox have proved to us that the US government indeed still holds absolute power over its citizens. It is important however to note that while one can charge a man basing on hearsay, it doesn't necessarily mean the courts have to convict the defendant based on the same rumors like the New York and Chicago federal courts chose to do. Usually such charges based on he say she say do not hold up in court. The jury have to believe the story first. The trick this government used against R. Kelly was to coerce and threaten people to testify on their behalf. A move that saw many women take the stand with concocted stories claiming R. Kelly coerced them into being intimate with him and all sorts of false accusations. This is probably the only way for the plaintiff to win a case against the defendant that is completely based on hearsay. Even then though, it was the role of the jury to look right through these witnesses and realize they were only saying these things because they had been conditioned to do so, and in other cases because they had been tampered with, considering there was a complaint already about the Bureau of Prisons officer's conduct. But because the jury too had not gone through a proper pre-selection, something that saw followers of the infamous surviving R. Kelly documentary become part of the team, there was no way they could have guaranteed an independent and non-prejudiced decision when it came to judgment. No wonder they imagined the R&B King was guilty on all 10 counts, something that is next to impossible, and that would be equally difficult even if the defendant wasn't R. Kelly. Not often do we see scenarios such as these where the government gets a landslide win against a defendant in a case dominated by guesswork, and one with no real evidence. The landslide win alone is an indicator that the trial was not free from prejudice. Another question that fans and supporters of R. Kelly wish to know is if Robert will be serving the entire 30 years given to him, or if the feds give good time. Good time, also known as gain time or sentence remission is the practice of credit-based early release from prison or jail, or time off given for good behavior. This is an area of increasing importance in criminal justice, as it involves early release as a way to alleviate prison overcrowding. The good news is that R. Kelly will not be needing this as he will be winning his appeals both in New York and Chicago. It is important therefore to note that R. Kelly never should have been found guilty, except for several reasons already broken down to you in some of our previous videos. In addition to the introduction of alien charges to his case which will not hold through the appeal process, R. Kelly was almost out of a legal team during the New York trial. Witness questioning was not effective, and general representation and counsel was insufficient. A reasonable panel of appeal court judges will be quick to see these elements of injustice, and if I were among them, I would be quick to grant a retrial, or to completely acquit him on most of the charges that everyone clearly finds alien to his case. If R. Kelly ever deserved to be in prison, he has been there long enough. Four years in prison all for rumors is just too much for a man that has only been good to everyone else but himself. In fact if R. Kelly is paying for anything, he is paying the price for generosity and his love for others. And of course he is also paying the price of loving the wrong women. When living a celebrity life as that of R. Kelly, the risk is you don't get to choose your lovers, in most cases they choose you. And then your job becomes screening them, and deciding who you can be with and who you wouldn't want to be with which can prove a difficult call if you do not have the right team to guide you. And so R. Kelly ended up with money makers and gold diggers whose only target was to walk away with a piece of his wealth. It's hard to imagine that he could have ended up with such women who can't keep anything confidential. It was ugly listening to one of the women on a live call with Tasha K. describe bedroom scenes no reasonable woman would be talking about, all in the name of selling a book she had written. How Robert ended up with such characters, it's hard to understand. What we know however is that all were after walking away with his money and that is likely the reason he kept changing from this one to that one. And now all of them, more than capable of telling lies against anybody for a dollar have actually been doing just this. 
Any reasonable court of justice should have been able to see right through these women. And indeed they saw right through them until such a time when it was the government interested in his downfall, when these women became the perfect tool for the job. And then all over a sudden, their so-called experiences with R. Kelly became very important. If it had been the women important in this equation, it would have happened a long time ago. It wasn't until R. Kelly demanded that he be paid his money to tunes of billions by his record label Sony RCA that the government picked interest in the matters surrounding his relationships. This alone cannot allow the government and their court counterparts to be rational when dealing with this delicate matter, because they already wanted to see R. Kelly behind bars. This is proof of prejudice and the verdict therefore cannot stand for too long if we really have an appeal court. It was inevitable that the jury be prejudicial in their judgment, and the government also had to go out of their way to catch their man. And so they sat in a meeting with the district attorney's leadership and concocted all these false accusations, driven by their interest in the interest of their funders. It is for this reason that we believe R. Kelly will not be languishing in prison for 30 years. He will eventually be set free and he will return to making great music for the world to enjoy. Even the district attorney herself Kim Fox, and the judges and jurors currently prejudicing him will be dancing to his irresistible tunes come his release. We just don't see R. Kelly in prison longer than six months to two years from now. It's therefore important that as fans and supporters, we remember that we are indeed a part of his life, and that we have a role to play. And that is to keep the truth out on the surface for people to see and know who is who in this scandal. We shall not stop exposing the liars in this equation. According to Danny King, what this channel and everyone else is failing to understand is that if R. Kelly is given another 25 years for the next case, it makes his appeal useless. We pray that he will get a lighter sentence of at most five years. How the government and the citizens of the USA could be fine with this level of prejudice is beyond my understanding. R. Kelly was kept in jail for years without trial. Who does that? In order to have and prove a case against anyone, there needs to be meaningful evidence but there is none in this case. They also played the game of splitting the case into two to make sure he gets the maximum sentence either way. We hope the Chicago judge this time does his job right not to play into the agenda of the government. All they have done to this man is break his Fifth Amendment rights over and over. And this is all because he is black and wealthy. We ought to stand up as the American people against this kind of injustice driven by racial variation. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.